The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Ahmad Anwar, uh, Country Sales Manager Egypt uh, for Heating Systems in Danfoss. Firstly, we would like to thank you all for your attendance today. Uh, our history of our innovation began in 1933. Danfoss employs uh, more than 28,000 people and serves customers in more than 100 countries. We are going to take 45 minutes for the session by Anis. Please feel free to keep your questions at the end of the session. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ahmad. So uh, today we will be talking about uh, a different type of balancing, not the shield water system or heating. It's it's uh, in the domestic hot water circulation system. When when we say domestic hot water circulation system, we are talking about application with central hot water system. Uh, that means a mix between a boiler and a calorifier solar system, anything which has a recirculation pump. So now if we talk about uh, the agenda of today, uh, the thermal balancing, what is the challenge, what is the legionella risk, is it real? It's only just a solution uh, to, to sell the solution or something. What is what are the type of the thermal balancing? How does it save energy? How does it improve comfort? And then how it is reducing the risk of legionella infection. So if we take uh, the thermal balancing, we can see that the, the the heating, the domestic hot water system, because as you can see in this circle, the if if we are in a, a cold country, 45% of the energy is consumed on the comfort heating, while 18% is consumed on the hot water system. The hot water system is the water we're using to wash, to take shower, to so and so on. So well, the, the, the main application for the recirculation hot water system, let's say in the Middle East region, is either it is school, hospital, hotel, all these kind of application will have the uh, central hot water system, which needs a balancing somehow with the recirculation pump. So if we take a normal uh, system, what they usually do is this. So you have your heating source, you have your recirculation pump, and then at the return of every hot water pipe, they put a DRV double regulating valve or manual balancing valve. Now the problem with the DRV, if you are, if all the water outlets are closed and the circulation only is running, it will be easy to balance every branch with enough flow. And that will be, uh, even temperature wise will be fine. But the moment people will start to use the hot water, then there will be unbalance because the RV is based on pressure difference. You have you set the DRV according to a differential pressure. But at the moment you open a water outlet, the differential pressure will change. And when the differential pressure will change, there is no, the, the flow is not valid. So the new formula of the flow in your building will be the closer to the heating source will have higher flow and higher recirculation flow means higher hot water temperature and the far away you go with the heat losses you will have lower uh, hot water flow lower hot water flow means low temperature and longer waiting time to have uh, the hot water also there is a risk of uh, bacteria creation in the network so the risk of regionella which is mainly due to uh, the due to the unbalanced system is the first problem to look at then you have the uncomfortable uh, long hot water waiting time it takes long to have your hot water and start taking a shower and this is for certain criteria in the hostel in the hospital and hotel it's not allowed they just 
specify up to a max of 15 seconds. Also, unfair energy allocation, if you are built based on the hot water, then if you are closer to your uh, heating source, you might be paying less. If you are far away, you will be paying more. Plus the waste of water itself. So here is some of the risks that we might face due to overpumping. Because when I say that, yes, it is very important to have thermal balance in the hot water system, domestic hot water for the showers and so on, they said, yes, we can easily solve this by increasing the pump head and increasing the flow of the recirculation. By doing this, we will be able to achieve everywhere the hot water temperature. It is true. But the higher you go in the temperature, again, the same proportional temperature distribution will be in, the, in, your, in your network, which means you want to achieve 50 degree at the last point, the first point will be at 60 degree. And 60 degree is waste of energy, shorter lifetime of your installation, and the risk of skin burn. So here, how, how it will look like skin burn any temperature above 55 might cause burns and based on the exposed time if you are exposed for 10 seconds on 55 it's fine you you will be feeling hot above 55 uh, uh, sorry above if if you are exposed more than 10 seconds at a 60 degree then light burn 100 seconds at six degree, then severe burn. So this is the risk when it is very hot. But but sometimes they said, yeah, it's okay to have 60 degree because I was discussing one of the project about the, ther the thermostatic mixing valve. They said it's fine to have 65 degree on the hot water. This is wrong because you might have a kid, uh, you might have a, a kids that might open full hot water and the risk is very high here. This is the risk on the installation. If you increase the temperature of the hot water, you increase the chance of calcium sedimentation, scalding, and corrosion based on what is your pipe type, if it is a PPR or if it is copper. Here is some of the real example of pipe. What happened? Desensification at a higher temperature. So it's really not a technical, technically a good solution. When you increase, you reach to this. So this is, you can achieve the required flow, but you will be having too high uh, hot water supply temperature. Now, if we look at the legionelle effects, so legionelle is a bacteria. The symptoms looks like uh, cough, fever, chill, uh, and then shortness of breath. Who is at risk? Smoker, people over the over 50 years old with weak immune system. Treatment is antibiotic prevention. There is two type because uh, when when we talk legionella, now we in the first part we said about increasing the hot water temperature to achieve the comfort or to achieve the supply of the hot water temperature. Now. When we speak legionella, there are two types. Disinfection done by heat overheating the hot water once in a week, once in two weeks, based on a sensor. There will be a sensor. Or by chemical dosing, which is chlorination, ozoning. But the problem with chemical dosing is you can, you can feel and smell the chemical while you are using the hot water. So it is not really recommended to go with the chemical dosing or the chlorination or zoning because of the discomfort of the people user, which means you, you will be smelling chlor while taking your shower in a five-star hotel. This cannot be. So that's why the, the, the thermal disinfection is uh, the better solution because it's bypassing the usage of the hot water to the people. It's doing a recirculation internally, which we will look at it later. Now, if we take some of the example of Legionella case in Europe, 
This is a uh, number of uh, people infected in 2015. As you can see, France, 1,300, Germany, 664, Italy, 1,500, and so on. So Legionella exists. Okay, we can say it has higher risk uh, in Europe than in uh, hot weather in the Middle East. But it is there and we should be careful. Plus, regulation in the Middle East also mention about the Legionella. It's not something that is only uh, to say that, yeah, you need to take care and so on. And it's a disease. No, in in the in the municipalities, uh, when they are issuing the NOCs, the hot water system, there will be talking about it. So, this bacteria has an ideal growth range, which is in this case 35 to 46. So, if you are above 50, the Legionella will not multiply. At 58. It will take 20 minutes to kill Legionella, and then at 58, uh, at 70 degree, it will take two minutes to kill Legionella. Which means, what will be the ideal to hot water temperature for both people comfort, less energy consumption, and Legionella prevention? It it will be 50 degrees. So the threshold here is 50 degree. So if we take installation with the MTCV. First, let's explain uh, about thermal balancing itself. We did not do anything except we removed the double regulating valve, which is a, a, a manual balancing valve using differential pressure to set the flow, which took that and put a dynamic balancing valve. How this dynamic balancing valve works, it uses the water temperature to open and close, which means at a given moment, you will be finding the opening and closing of these MTCV different based on the position of the valve compared to the heat source and based on the usage of the hot water. If someone is using, then the MTCV will reduce the circulation because it's directly the water supply is going from the source to the usage, uh, to the thermostat mixing valve. So there is no need to recirculate at that point at that water outlet, which means if the valve was open 30%, it will become 20% because someone is using. The farther you go, the valve will be opened more to make more recirculation to maintain the hot water supply temperature to your outlet. So very simple, compared to normal balancing valve this valve is constantly moving to compensate for the temperature change and the only variable that will open and close this valve automatically is the water temperature and here we need to mention that this valve is not electronic it's thermostatic which means it has a built-in thermal element that is working standalone you don't have to do anything you don't need the feedback, you don't need to monitor, you don't need to control this valve. You just set to your desired temperature one time during installation and then finish. That's the only thing that needs to be done. Plus, you need to mention one thing. When we are recirculating the hot water system, let's say your supply pipe is 32. The hot water system in domestic hot water uh, do not follow the comfort heating or the comfort shield water. When when we are using FCU with shield water system to have cooling, the supply pipe size equal to the return pipe size. But in the case of even the heating is the same, supply pipe should be equal to return. But in case of recirculation of domestic hot water system, the supply pipe will be way bigger than the return because you only need to recirculate a small portion of water flow to maintain the supply hot water temperature, nothing else. It, it, at, at actual designs, if your uh, supply hot water pipe is 25, you can go 15 mm return, 20 mm return. 
you can go as small as you can. It is not an issue. So the recirculation is something else in the domestic hot water compared to other application. If we take a small comparison between the RVs, which is our DRV, and the MTCV, MTCV which stands for multifunctional thermostatic circulating valve. So uh, the RVs do not secure equal temperature due to the dynamic nature of water consumption, it's different usage, complication, complicated hydraulic calculation. It's it's uh, the 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 the, the DRV is only uh, a static. It's one time, while this the hot water system is keep on changing pressure wise. Okay, changed in pressure losses caused by scalding process because you have that sedimentation of calcium inside the pipe, and then insufficient commissioning because it is done only one time. Now for the MTCV. It adapts to the nature of water consumption. If someone is using it, it will immediately close, as we said. It will automatically balance everywhere because it only follows the law of a temperature, nothing else. And also it has simple setting to your desired temperature using the upper knob on the valve, which is done only one time during the installation of the valve. These are the, uh, the three types, I would say. Uh, it's the same valve. If we take the base, it's the MTCVA. MTCVA is the thermal balancing valve. If you want to have thermal balancing in your system, you can go only with version A, which is factory set at 50 degree. Version B will give you a self-acting thermal disinfection. Self-acting thermal disinfection will be fixed in the middle, and this it will allow a bypass position, which we'll see in a later slide, to, to bypass higher uh, temperature, higher hot water temperature to, to make the disinfection. And then the third option, which is, let's say, the fully electronic option, this option will be used in case you need an electronic thermal disinfection, which means it's not applicable in the Middle East here because uh, in, in cold weather, uh, when you start with a temperature of 55, uh, the, the, the thermal, the, the heat losses on the pipes is really high. And, and when the heat loss is really high, even a small distance uh, will cause the temperature to drop. After one week of operation, there should be uh, an electronic disinfection. And this is done using this CCR2, which is a controller. Uh, and then you will you you will be using uh, an actuator in the middle, and then your basic version of the MTCV plus the disinfection module. So and and the pressure a PT thousand temperature sensor. So here how this is done. This controller will be taking inputs from from hot water temperature, domestic hot water temperature, and then it will one uh, riser by riser flash it, which means. It will command this actuator to open the bypass position of the MTCV to allow recirculation of 70 degree hot water. When you recirculate 70 degree hot water, as we saw in that graph of Legionella, it will take two minutes to kill every germs and bacteria. Once that riser is done, it will move, switch to the next one. So uh, one by one until the full disinfection is done, once a week or once every two weeks, it's uh, how you set it. But here in Middle East, most most commonly used is this version, which is version A, and they add uh, a temperature sensor on the red port. Temperature sensor is a temperature gauge, which is also with the valve. It's, it comes with the valve in order to uh, physically check the temperature during commissioning or during operation. So if you have your, a building, uh, you can take like five of the MTCVs with temperature sensor, with temperature gauge, and the remaining normal MTCV A. So how it works? Simply turn the flow temperature limiter. No this no disinfection function. Valve is closed at uh, water temperature five degree above the set point. So let's say, well, it's not is fully closed but it will start to close as you can see here at 50 degree 
it's not fully closed, but it is going toward closing. But 75, because this is the disinfection temperature, it will go full closed. So the factory set of the valve is 50 degree. So this is how the valve will look like from the inside. Where the, here most important to mention is this number four, the thermo element. This is the part where the valve will be operating up and down based on the water temperature. And the water temperature is sensed through the water flow itself. There is no external temperature sensor or an electronic temperature or whatever. It's only the water in contact with the element number four that will expand like a wax, like a thermo, thermal actuator. It works with the same scenario. When it is heated, it will expand, then it will close. When it is cold, it will retract and open using that spring. The spring is the one which will uh, bring back the valve to uh, initial position. And number 10, which is, as we said, the plug for the thermometer. And this is the bypass position. At, at initial stage, you can see it's uh, closed when you push it to open. But this will not be used in normal operation. So the, the temperature range on the MTCV is from 35 to 60, at, and the factory setting is 50 degree. What we recommend, because when we are proposing this valve, which we did already in a lot of projects here in the Middle East, in Saudi, in Dubai, in uh, in in Bahrain, what what we usually do, we make the study and the calculation, which means we take the drawing from you. We will recommend which position where the valve needs to be installed because sometimes you said this, people might say that you have a limited size or a limited range of of uh, of the valve. What we say usually is why we limited the size of the valve to uh, the N15 and the N20 only. The reason for that is when you are trying to prevent Legionella growth, there is a minimum volume of water that can be stagnant. If you increase that volume, the risk of Legionella growth will be higher. And this rule of thumb, which is tested on laboratories, uh, is three liter of water volume. Up to three liter volume of water, there is no risk of Legionella growth. Above three liter water volume on a pipe, stagnant, not moving, the risk of Legionella will be there. So for us, we took this example, up to three bathrooms, we can respect this rule, which means three bathrooms together, you can loop them and re return pipe, recirculate them through one MTCV. If you calculate the, the, the distance from that MTCV till the water outlet, the farthest water outlet, it will be four to five meters. Four to five meters on a DN15 pipe will give you less than a three liter of water if you take it as a volume. And this is where comes the design center. In our case, we do this calculation. We suggest the location of the position of the MTCVs. And then we give you the set points with the proportional band because there will be, with the, the farther you go from the heat source, then the degree, the water temperature will drop, which means if you want to achieve 50 degree at uh, two thirds of the installation, you need to set your MTCV to 51.5 or 52. So you need to increase the setting on the MTCV knob to achieve the 50 degree. This increase in the setting, we are calculating using five watt per meter heat losses when you run through a, a straight pipe. So all these calculations we are doing, you don't have to worry about. But if you take the valve as it is, you don't have to do anything. You just set it to 50 degree or keep it as factory setting, install it, and it is working. So here, temperature setting, it it might look simple through that knob, but you need to unlock using an LN key the rotation of this in order to prevent people to tamper with or someone to change the temperature. 
it's not required. So there is a plastic red cover, it will be removed, then you have a place for a link key. Once you turn this, you will be able to set the temperature. So this is how it will look like in a recirculation system. And you will find this empty CV. So the distance I am talking about is from this water outlet. We are recirculating here from this point and back here. So the recirculation starts from here. The distance will be from this point and then till the water outlet. That distance should not exceed three liter of water volume. It's something we are calculating, so you don't have to worry about. The disinfection, how it is working, it's just a bypass through the thermal element. So if we see here, when the temperature will exceed uh, a 65 degree threshold, then the thermal element, which is the one controlling the water flow based on the temperature, will be fully closed. And then the bypass position will start to open. Here's the red one is the bypass position. It will go above the cone of the thermal element. And then the thermal element flow will be stopped. So if we take if 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 we take this middle one without the disinfection, why are they call self-acting disinfection? Because it has another thermal element that will be normally closed and will open at temperature above 70 degrees once it is open it will allow bypass of the hot water when you bypass hot water on 70 degree you will kill all the bacteria germs and you will do your disinfection so this is the normal disinfection with the self-acting disinfection module at the version b this is a simple application of the MTCV using also thermostatic mixing valve because thermal recirculating valve, which is the MTCV, multifunction thermostatic circulation valve, has a different function than the thermostatic mixing valve. It will not do the job of thermostatic mixing valve. Thermostatic mixing valve will take hot, cold water and give you the water that you need to take your shower or to wash your hand and so on. Thermost thermostatic multifunctional thermostatic circulation valve will give you the 50 degree on the hot water side to to prevent uh, the legionella growth and to give you the uh, minimum required uh, hot water temperature for your usage. So two different functions. So you in, in normal scenario you will find thermostatic mixing valve and MTCV at the return pipe. Electronic disinfection, we already spoke about, but it is not really applicable in the Middle East, but this is simple. Instead of using that self-acting, using the temperature sensing element to open the bypass position, you will be using an electronic actuator and the controller. That's simple. When, when you command disinfection, the actuator will push down to open the path of the bypass, and that's it. So this is how it works because it you can also uh, when you are using the the electronic solution with the most recent CCR2 controller from Danfoss you have up to 20 inputs and 20 outputs which means one controller is enough to disinfect 20 riser plus you will be able to connect to this controller using Wi-Fi which means you can manually or remotely from your mobile command the disinfection or disable it. It's up to you. So a lot of features, but I would say in our region, in the Middle East, it's not really required. What you need mainly in Middle East is this application. A couple of the MTCVs will have this temperature gauge, other will not, and you will be needing the thermostatic mixing valve, both. So you will be having at your bathroom, guest room in the hotel, this, and then after two guest room, let's say they are mirror, you will be using MTCV. Total quantity of MTCV, five or 10 of them will be having the temperature gauge just to see how is the temperature at the beginning, uh, closer to the heat source, and then at the halfway, 
and then at the farthest point. So the benefits of the MTCVs, energy saving, less waste of water, improved user comfort, reduce the regionella, and then maintain the installation. So if we, if we, because it's very important to mention here about the instantaneous hot water supply, when, when you are using a thermal based balancing valve, which means the moment you open your water faucet, water outlet, it will only need less than 10 seconds to give you hot water required. And that would save a lot of water uh, consumption. So when we say it's comfortable for the users, it's directly linked with energy consumption. Because I saw in a lot of buildings, you open the hot water, then you wait until it is very hot, then you balance it with the mixer to have the temperature that you will be able to take shower with. So all this combination is waiting, wasting a lot of uh, water recirculation. But when you have direct temperature control on it, the moment you open hot, you will have 50 degree, you balance, then you take your shower. So this is very important. So thermal balancing reduces the energy consumption by reducing circulation flow, as you we were talking, less waste water, fair energy cost allocation, quick payback time for investment. And the payback time for an existing installation, which we tried here, was around six months. Because you are taking a DRV, you are putting another valve at the same position, but doing the right work. The RV was not doing it the right way, MTCV will do it the right way. So the cost of that, doing that, comparing to what you could save, is paying itself back in less than a year. And this is very important, because it's, it's not only uh, a valve to balance and then hand over the project and done, no. This is a dynamic valve that is permanently opening and closing to maintain a certain level of water temperature that leads to fair uh, to a better energy efficiency. The comfort, it is giving the right temperature to all loads, reliable hot water supply in all taps, no waiting time, and the possibility of individual temperature setting because you might have higher temperature setting somewhere and then lower temperature setting in another place. And also reduce the risk of burns. As we talk also, it will reduce the Legionella infection by just killing it in case you have a retrofit job and the installation is already existing, then there is a Legionella. In that case, you can put uh, empty CVs and then by, with, with the self-disinfection module, which is the version B, then run 70 degree hot water and every germs and legionella will be killed. But if you have a new installation, you don't need that because since day one, you are circulating 50 degree hot water. And as we see, uh, we have seen at 50 degree, the legionella will not multiply. Lifetime of the installation, in case you are using copper or zinc pipe, it will reduce the risk of corrosion due to the higher pump head and higher water temperature and risk of scalding as well. As we said, you just set the valve and then it's working on its own. There is no electronic or electric interference. It's only a standalone valve. And you can also upgrade the valve. Why, let's say you took uh, version A, which is only the valve, you set at 50 degrees. Later on, you wanted to add the disinfection module or temperature gauge. The same valve can be upgraded. You don't have to change anything. It's just something to put on the top of that valve. The valve is made from DZR brass for sustainable installation. So this is the technical data of the valve. Max working pressure is 10 bar, tested at 16 bar. Temperature up to 100, setting range up to, from 35 to 60, factory setting is 50, dimension 15 and 20, the KV at 20 degree, 
for the N15, 1.5 meter cube per hour, and then for the N20, 1.8 meter cube per hour. Proportional bend up to 5 degree, then hysteresis up to 0 0.6 degree. Thread is internal. And then the fitting, as we said, of the valve itself on the top and so on. Shut off function and so on. In uh, in in copper. But since it is uh, a valve used in water supply system, we have to get this certificate, RAS approval. So here, as you can see, they are different, but all these four are equivalent to RAS. I know the most known is WRAS. This one is in France. This is in Germany. This is in Poland. So this is the one which is more international. We have this approval as well. The, and this part, which is the insert part, and the inner part are the, these that are brushed, internal component. The body itself, as you can see, the body is from red bronze. The red bronze can take higher temperature and pressure. In our case, we need, to, we need the body to take higher temperature. And this is the main con. And as you can see, the white part here is the thermo element. And the spring can be seen also from here. So conclusion, benefits of MTCV, automatic thermal balance of circulation flow reduces the energy consumption and less heat loss. The waiting time will be less in case the comfort is crucial, hotel, hospitals, schools, and so on. And most importantly, there is re reduction and elimination of any risk of Legionella bacteria which is really dangerous for the health. So now I leave it to uh, Iman to tell me if there is any question so we can answer them. Uh, yes, Anis, thank you. We have some questions. Um, let's go to them. Uh, can we perhaps get a copy of the presentation? Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, we will we'll be have... sharing. We will be sharing all the presentation we have done in Damos webinar in one single link and portal that everyone will be uh, able to access it uh, with the voice also recording. But we are preparing this with uh, with our team. It will be ready in the next week, maybe. Okay. Uh, first, passive valves is an absolutely brilliant. Hmm. I cannot hear you. What about low cycle fatigue and possible cracks in this passive valve? First, Anis, can you hear me? No, now I can, but I was not able before. Anis, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, okay. First, passive valves is an absolutely brilliant approach. Now I can. What understand. about low cycle fatigue? And possible cracks in this. So now you can hear me? Now I can, but when you were asking the question, I could not hear you. Okay, let's try again. Uh, first, passive valves is an absolutely brilliant approach. What about low cycle fatigue and possible cracks in this passive valves after thousands of cycles? But uh, it's it's uh, first it's a thermal solution, and uh, every product have has a lifespan. This valve is not supposed to last more than the building lifetime. Okay, so number of cycles will be there, but if you consider one cycle from full open to full closed position, then this valve will really last more than the building itself. Because the valve is not permanently moving up and down, and it's not moving the fast way like it can be imagined. The moment the temperature changes, the valve will change its position to recirculate an exact amount of water for that uh, temperature, which means 
at any given moment, you will find the MTCV closer to the source opened at 20%. And then the next one is open 30%. And then the next one, 50%, and so on, until the last one will be 100%. These are a static. It will be at that position if no one is using the hot water. The moment the hot water will start to be used, based on the position of the MTCV, it will move. Then yes, it might, the, 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 with the life cycles, there is no risk of cracks. <coughs> Sorry, risk of cracks is not there because of the body itself of the valve. As we said, it's in red bronze. And red bronze is supposed to, be, to take a very high uh, shock and uh, pressure. So. But li uh, lifetime, yes, of the valve has a lifetime. And with these number of cycles, I would say it will maybe make one cycle in one week only. So which means the valve can take really, will have a really long lifetime. Uh, uh, did that okay. answer your question? Yes, I think. Okay. Probably. Yeah. Um, yeah Next one. So. Uh, is, is the thermostatic element replaceable? And is it affected by scale or a dirty motor? No, it's first the thermostatic element is somehow embedded inside the different part and there is a gasket in between, let's say, or a, or a ring, let's say EPDM ring in between, which means dirt will not be stuck inside the thermo element. But if uh, this is to answer that, uh replacement or not which means what i'm trying to say here that the valve is maintenance free you don't have to do anything okay it will work on its own you don't have to clean you don't have to replace any part but to answer the question that can it be replaced yes you can replace the whole insert of the valve which you can remove from the valve body so uh, anything which was fixed can be replaced but there is no specific spare part for that thermo element or the insert of the MTCV due to the fact that the valve do not need any maintenance. Okay. Uh, uh. This part is, as you can see, there is a where, where you can unscrew and remove it completely. Then you can replace, but you don't have to. The valve is maintenance free. Okay. 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 The next one. Um, MTCV selected as per water flow or pipe size. I think we're ready. Go uh, through it, but uh, we selected as per water flow or pipe size. Pipe size. Yeah. I mean, uh, it is really uh, if you want to go the, the the real selection of MTCV then you need to consider this. In your, let's say you have a bathroom, you have three water outlets. Three water outlets, you have a wash basin, a bathtub, and then a bidet. Out of these three, you might need, let's say, 0 0.1 or one liter per minute, or two liters per minute. But since the usage of these three are intermittent, which means if one is used, the other two are not, because you cannot have someone sitting two people in the same bathroom. One only is using and one will be using one hot water outlet. Because of that, you will be uh, using only an intermittent use, which will reduce the water flow considered for every unit. There is a chart, there is a table, which once you put all the water outlets you have, or the water is fixture, they called the water fixture, you will have number of units. And from that number of units, you will have what is your water flow required. And that water flow will be compared with with the water flow of the MTCV, either to go the N15 or the N20. This is the real right way to do the selection. If you want to cut it short, you can go. If you have one bathroom, you can use one the N15. If you have two to three bathrooms, you can use the N20. This is the faster way to select. Using this or that will not really make a big difference because it's a dynamic movement of the valve to control based on the recirculation. If you have less flow, you will recirculate more, then the valve will open to recirculate more. If you have higher flow, the valve will close to recirculate less. 
and that's it. But the selection can be either uh, calculated, designed by Danfoss, or you can just go with pipe size. But what we recommend is to give us the full project details as drawings, as uh, number of fixtures, and we will do this calculation and selection. Also, we can put the valve itself on your schematic diagram for the location, because as I said, we need to maintain that minimum three liter of water volume stagnant. We should not exceed more than three liter water volume stagnant water to prevent the legionella creation in that area. So for that reason, we will be checking your design and advising the location of these valves. Clear? Okay, Anis, uh, so uh, to whom uh, should uh, we send the drawings to check the MTCV type and positions yeah, for any for project? Yeah, for Danfoss. Yeah, I mean for the uh, sales guys from each country or, um, yeah, yeah, we yeah can, you can send. At the end, when, it, when you reach out to me, then I will take care of it. I will forward it to Concerned. We have the design support center. We can do it locally. It's okay, as long as we have the drawings uh, and uh, the details of the water outlet, which means on the plan views, you can see the water outlet. Once you have these, then you will be able to do the selection. I can show a sample of the selection, I mean, if you want. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, please, because we have a question about this also. So here, as you can see, MTCV type DN. This is the preset with the XP, which is that extra temperature based on the position of the valve. You see how small is the water flow? 0 0.008 liter per second. This is the recirculation flow. This is the mm. differential pressure. I don't know if everyone can see. I'm mean, zooming it a little bit. You see yeah, the yeah, pressure pressure see the recirculation in meter, which means 1.3 meter is 0. Uh, zero 01, which is 1.3, this one is uh, like uh, 13 kPa only. And this is the position of the valve in the riser. This is the reference position. And this is the differential pressure in kPa. So we are giving all these details while we are doing the selection. But if, if you will go with pipe, then you will be seeing only this. MTCV type and DN, no technical data at all. You need at least, this is the most important, this one. Temperature set point with the extra. Temperature set point plus one degree. You see here example, 51 is the set point plus 1.1 degree. 50 plus 0 0.5 degree. 50 plus 0 0.5, based on the position of, of the valve in your installation. Okay, next. Okay. So, would you please go back uh, to slide 24 in the presentation? This one? Yes, this probably. Um, we have a question here. Do we need to install MTCV in all the circuits? Again, when we say... Do we need... Yeah. Yeah. When we okay. say okay. when we say thermostatic balancing or recirculating valve, this MTCV, it will be the replacement of the DRV because in central hot water system you need to balance every branch. In some of the cases, which I saw other manufacturer solution. They are having a higher, bigger sizes of this MTCV, which means you will be seeing only out of these let's say one in the middle, one at the last, and so on. This is the wrong why. 
this is completely wrong why because they are not considering the stagnant water and if you have a stagnant water with a very long pipe run let's say you are your heat source is here and you are putting a valve here to recirculate all these in one single valve then it will take again longer time to give you instantaneous hot water supply plus more water flow to achieve that plus a very high risk of legionella growth because you have a long pipe stagnant water not heated okay after time of non-usage the water will cool down and it will be the ideal range of regionella growth plus you need more than 20 30 seconds let's say based on your position from the heat source to achieve that so this question is all the time coming because of the budget itself you said okay i can reduce the number of recirculating valve by making it bigger size and put it in a different location but the right application is if you ask me every guest room every bathroom one mtcv if you have flat residential flat every flat which having three bathrooms one mtcv considering that minimum stagnant water volume of three liters so if someone would tell you I will put only one or two on the main riser to achieve this minimum recirculation. Functionality, it will work, but longer wait time, longer waiting time for good to get hot water means more energy consumption and high risk of lesional growth. So the MTCV, if you put it this way, or they call it thermostat recirculating valve with the other competitors, if you put it this way, make it bigger because there are bigger sizes than us you just complying with the specification that you need to recirculate but you are not really providing the solution for the domestic hot water which the main purpose the main function of this valve is for lesional prevention and then comfort and then less energy consumption if you, if you are making trying to reduce the initial cost by making bigger size and putting a certain location you increase the running cost and the valve will not do its job at all so this the location of the mtcvs will be decided by calculating the water outlets the water volume required to be recirculated and then considering that minimum stagnant water rule of thumb of three liter of water volume okay okay uh we have uh, one more question uh, you mentioned that mtcv is available in two sizes only uh, so someone is working uh, in one project now and as per the design they need uh, then 40 then 50 what can you propose in this case can we use the rv uh, as replacement for this sizes i mean look if you cannot i mean in this case of valves and product uh, specification cannot really dictate what size needs to be used if you tell me you come to me as a contractor you tell me i need this size and that's it then yes i tell you i don't have but if you tell me i need this solution not this valve i need the solution when you tell me i need a solution then i need to look at all this it will be very easy for us as danfoss to make up to the end 50 or up to the end 100 valve it's not something complicated it's the valve connection will be bigger the inset will be bigger and so on but above the dn25 it will not be used dn20 as a max because this valve the recirculation pipe is really small like as we said you can have a supply pipe at uh, you can have a supply hot water pipe at 32 mm return is 50 uh, 15 one five two size three size less because you the recirculation water volume is is, is very less okay so that is why we are only having these two dimensions because after we studied and we checked how the valve will be used properly on the optimum way is to have these two sizes to make sure that every possible recirculation point is recirculated without the risk of 
that losing that to have more stagnant water because bigger mtcv means uh, more number of water outlets that can be collected together on one mtcv and when you do this you will allow longer pipe distance from the mtcv till the water outlet and that will be a fixed volume of water that might cause stagnant water stagnant water in recirculation hot water system means legionella risk so that is why we came up with this but if you need only the size to match i can tell you it's 15 and 20 but if you need the solution we can study this and give you the recommendation on the optimum location of the mtcv set point pressure water flow etc okay okay uh, regarding the sizes also uh, anis we say the mtcv size is less compared to supply pipes uh, to supply pipe size what happens if all taps in that line is fully open then return size to be more no if you have all taps fully open on that line then you need only to pump hot water to that line and supply pipe is big when the return pipe will start to be used when these taps are closed when the when the hot water is not in use then you are recirculating the moment the hot water is in use as you said all of them are opened then you just need to pump the water directly there because it will become an opened loop when you open the water outlet there there is no more closed loop it's an open loop and the mtcv job is to recirculate recirculate means either partially recirculate which means out of three outlet one is open two are closed you need to recirculate the equivalent volume of the two or if all are closed you need to circulate only the small volume of the equivalent to three valve closed so if all of them are opened fully then it's open loop there will be booster pump there will be hot water direct supply to that place but the mtcv is to maintain the hot water temperature at the preset value until the moment someone will tr will come and open the water outlet to have the hot water so yes it is even better if it opens still you can have a very small recirculating pipe regardless of what is the usage of on the supply because the recirculation is only required to maintain water temperature and not water flow should make a difference here in hot water domestic hot water usage is the purpose here is to maintain the water temperature and not the water flow the water flow will be maintained by the main water supply hot water supply mainly will give you the water flow and one the moment you open the shower you'll have a lot of pressure and so on the moment you close you need to re recirculate some volume of water to maintain a minimum temperature on that branches or pipe clear Yes. Um, clear, Ahmad? Yes, clear, very clear, Anis. Thank you. Uh, we have a question related. Can you hear me? Anis, do you still hear me? So um, we have one question also related uh, to disinfection, uh, saying when using the automatic disinfection on the B model, how does the 70 degree water reach the valve if the set point on the valve is 55 degrees and the water does not pass through the valve? Yeah, I will show it here, just on the next slide. This is the disinfection module. In the middle is the disinfection mode. So this one, as you can see here, it's closed. It's normally pulled up, which is closed. And this one is controlling based on the water, hot water temperature. So the blue line here, it will be moving up and down up to a 60 degree, which is the limit of the setting here. 
If it reaches to 60, it will be nearly closed. But if it is above 65, this part will be fully closed. And when it is fully closed, it will allow this passage, the upper side, the bypass. But how you will open the bypass is by putting 70 degree hot water to this thermal element because the disinfection module, thermal self-acting disinfection module, has also a thermal element that will expand at 70 degree. So it will take over from there. But when it is 70 degree, this will be pushed down. And when it pushed down, it's pushed to open. When you push down, you open to allow the red line of water to pass. So the blue will no more be valid. Only the red will be here bypassed. So it's like two valves in one. One valve will be working for on a temperature range of 35 up to 60. And then another valve, which is the, the, the B, the, in the middle, the disinfection, self-active module will work at 70 degree and more. Clear? So it's, it's, it's two complete different way of water flowing through the valve. One is the blue line, which is going normally to control based on your hot water temperature. And the other one, which is the red line, which will be only opening in case the hot water temperature is above 70 degree. And because above 70 degree, that we are sure that the, the main thermo element, which is used on the MTCV to control, open and close, is at full close position when the temperature is above 65. So we made sure that this is fully closed before going to this part and you put 70 degree to make it open. When you put 70 degree on this middle thermal element, this will go down and will allow a bypass of the flow. When you allow bypass of the flow, you will disinfect, you will flush, you will kill every bacteria in the system. Was that clear? Yes. So um, I think now uh, we are done uh, with okay. the time. So we have a lot of questions. We can uh, then answer them, them, Anis, and send to um, all the uh, the people that require answers. Because okay. we have a lot of questions, actually, and we are running out of time. It's almost uh, 11 three. Yeah. So finally, so finally, our MTCV TCV provides a thermal balance in the hot water installation by keeping a constant temperature in the system limiting the flow in the circulation pipes to the minimum required level. Thank you all for your attendance. Thank you for questions. And uh, we are willing to see you in our uh, next uh, webinars. Uh, we will share, as promised, the presentation and everything. Thank you, Anis. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.